What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, I'm going to go through the blank and double game weeks, what we know and what we're expecting to happen later on in the season and also talk about some chip strategy as well. It seemed like a good time to do it because we've had Bournemouth versus Luton for 28 announced. We've also had the results from the FA Cup fourth round replay as well. So there's lots to go through. Hopefully everything in there is easy to understand and I've got it correct. If there's anything that I've missed because I find out later on, or someone leaves a comment and points out a mistake, I'll leave a pinned comment underneath this video on YouTube um, and I'll edit it as I go. Hopefully there's nothing major there, but just in case there is, I'll leave that comment. If you enjoy the video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and let's jump into it. So let's start with double game week 25. That's now been confirmed. We know that four teams are going to double that week, which are Liverpool, Luton, Man City, and Brentford. So Liverpool have got Brentford away and Luton at home. I think that's a pretty good set of fixtures for both defenders and attackers. So obviously Darwin, Jota, uh, Luis Diaz, people are looking at potentially Salah if he's back fit as well. We'll have to wait and see what Klopp says in his press conference tomorrow. People have got Trent. You could look at Van Dyke as well. I don't think I look at too many other defenders because of rot rotation and minutes concerns. But there's a lot of Liverpool players you could look at. Um, for Luton, it's Man United at home and Liverpool away, which is a bit tougher on paper for both attackers and defenders. Although some people might say, with well, the way Luton are playing right now and how hit and miss Man United can be, it's not that bad. Um, they will also blank in 26, but they will double in 28 as well. So Luton players are worth thinking about. They're nice and cheap too. With Man City, Chelsea at home and Brentford at home, which is potentially difficult-ish. It really depends on which Chelsea team turn up. They did really well against Villa in the FA Cup last night. Not so good in the Premier League game before that. But it's Man City, right? They're at home in both games. You would expect goals in both of those fixtures, plus potential defensive returns as well. So lots of players to look at for Man City. They won't blank in game week 26, which is another plus. And the fixture is Bournemouth away, which is pretty good. And then for Brentford, it's Liverpool at home and Man City away, which is probably the toughest double game week of the lot in 25. But I don't think it will put, completely put people off getting Flecken if they need a new goalkeeper or Tony potentially to fill a forward slot because they double in 25, albeit there's two tough fixtures, but they definitely play in 26 and they've got a fixture in 29 as well. So I wouldn't completely rule them out, but a lot of it will come down to chip strategy and stuff like that, which we'll talk about uh, later on. And then you've got blank game week 26, which is also confirmed at this point. So Liverpool and Luton, who double in 25, will blank in 26. But also, so will Chelsea and Spurs. And that's all based off the Carabao Cup final. Um, so after Liverpool's blank in 26, it's Forest away in 27, so not that bad. Man City at home in 28, which is much tougher. And in 29, they'll play Everton away, but only if they lose in the FA Cup fifth round, which is quite unlikely. So it's pretty... You can be pretty sure that Liverpool are going to blank in 29. Not a guarantee. There's a good chance that will happen. For Luton, blank in 26. Then it's Villa at home in 27, which I've got as a difficult-ish fixture. But actually, the way Luton have been playing right now, they could score goals in that. And I think if you were carrying Kaminsky or Doughty through the double in 25, to then have to play them in 27 wouldn't be the end of the world against Villa. And then they got the double of Crystal Palace away and Bournemouth away in 28. And then they've got Nottingham Forest at home in 29. But that game is also quite likely... Um, oh, sorry. That fixture is actually a good chance of being on if Luton lose to Man City in the FA Cup fifth round and if Man United beat Nottingham Forest. I mean, some people might look at it and say that Forest have got a good chance of beating Man United. That could happen. But I think if I was trying to bet on it right now... Luton have probably got that fixture in 29. So their fixture run actually looks really good once you include the double from 25 as well. For Chelsea, they won in the FA Cup last night. So their fixtures from 26 now look blank in 26. Brentford away in 27. Newcastle at home in 28. So 27 and 28 are not that bad. But in 29, Arsenal away, which is a difficult fixture even if it's on, is now quite likely to be off. So Chelsea players have definitely become less valuable based off last night's result. And then for Spurs, it's a blank. But then they've got Palace at home, Villa away, and Fulham at home guaranteed in 29. So Spurs are a interesting discussion because the fixtures before the blank are good, but they've got no double. The fixtures after the blank are decent as well. But when you've got a managed bunch of other teams in 26, it does become quite difficult to hold on to all of those players. So maybe a chip might be useful. But again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's double game week 25 and blank game week 26. Let's talk about what could happen in the future.
Actually, before I start talking about what could happen in the future, I should mention Double Game Week 28, which has obviously been confirmed now as well. So Luton will play Palace away and Bournemouth away, which is pretty good. Um, it would be better if they had a home game mixed in there. But I think when you view Luton as an overall with the double in 25, the double in 28 as well, a good chance of having a fixture in 29, that run looks pretty good, especially for a set of players that are really cheap. You've got Adib Adebayo as a cheap forward, Barkley is a cheap midfielder, Doughty is a cheap defender, and of course Kaminsky in gold as well. But Bournemouth's double looks great. Sheffield United at home and Luton at home. You could definitely make a case for having Solanke, which almost everyone will. He'll also be the most popular captain that week by far. I suspect it will be um Harlan in game week 25 but if Salah's fit there might be a little bit of a split there but in 28 it will definitely be Solanke for a lot of engaged managers but you've got obviously Tavernier as a midfielder you could go for Senesai as a defender and Neto in goal as well there's not a high chance of Bournemouth's game being on in 29 but it is a possibility as well but that double looks great especially for Bournemouth so I know I've already touched on blank game week 29, but I want to try and make everything as clear as possible in this video. So teams will blank in game week 29 if they are in the FA Cup quarterfinal and so will their opponents. So any team that gets through the FA Cup fifth round, which is the next stage of the FA Cup, will then blank in 29 and so will whichever team they're scheduled to play that week. So for example, right, Man City are due to play Brighton away in 29. If Man City beat Luton in the FA Cup fifth round, They'll then be through to the quarterfinals. They won't be able to play in 29, and obviously neither will Brighton as well. So both those teams will blank no matter what Brighton do in the FA Cup. And I'll come on to the draw in just a second. We will know the results of the fifth round games between game weeks 26 and 27. So after 26, those fifth round games will be played and we'll know the results going into 27. So potentially a wild card around 27 could work to prepare for double game week 28 and then the blanks in 29. And I'll come on to chip strategy and stuff like that later on. There are some fixtures definitely on in 29, which we already know, because these teams are all out of the FA Cup. So Burnley versus Brentford is on. So look, I've got Charlie Taylor in my team. I'm not expecting him back fit necessarily by then, but maybe he's worth holding on to. Um, obviously, I've already mentioned Flecken and Tony as well. Fulham versus Spurs is quite a key one because a lot of people have got Richarlison, Porro, Son is now back or will be back um, from the Asian Cup because South Korea are out. So he's someone to look at as well. Madison is back fit. Spurs have suddenly got a lot of their players um, available. And that fixture is pretty decent. As I've already mentioned, the fixtures for Spurs beforehand, apart from the blank in 26, are pretty decent. And because Chelsea beat Aston Villa in the FA Cup last night, that means that West Ham versus Aston Villa, uh, Aston Villa will definitely be on in 29. So if you've got like Ariola or Jared Bowen or Ollie Watkins or Douglas Deweese or whichever defender from Aston Villa, Martinez, etc., they will play in 29. Obviously, if they get dropped or injured, that's a different story. But you know that fixture will be on. So all of a sudden, when I was discussing potentially selling Ollie Watkins for game week 24 to load up on Liverpool players, I'm now a little bit less sure about doing that. And because Chelsea went through, there's now a good chance that Chelsea versus Arsenal will be off in game week 29. This is what the fifth round draw looks like. I did discuss this um, a couple of weeks ago. But basically, a lot of Premier League teams have been kept apart, which means there's a good chance there's quite a few blank game weeks in 29. So take, for example, Blackburn versus Newcastle. Newcastle will be favourites to go through. So if they do, they will blank in 29, and so will their opponents, Crystal Palace. Chelsea have got Leeds. Now, Leeds are, I think, currently like in the top five for in, in the championship, right? And obviously, they've been a Premier League team recently. There is a chance that upsets will happen in the FA Cup fifth round, um, but we just obviously don't know which games they will be, so it's hard to plan for. I mean, the odds are that all the Premier League teams will go through, and therefore, there'll be a lot of blanks. But there's always at least one upset. And that upset makes it a lot easier to manage blank game week 29, which is why I wouldn't completely be set on free hit in that week. So potentially Leeds could beat Chelsea. And if that happens, Chelsea and Arsenal would then play in 29. But the odds will be, especially with Chelsea at home, that they will win. Bournemouth have got Leicester. Now Leicester obviously almost, well not obviously, but almost certainly going to come back up into the Premier League next season. So there's a chance that they will beat Bournemouth. And if they do, then Bournemouth might play in 29 but only if Wolves also beat Brighton in the FA Cup. So for Bournemouth versus Wolves to be on in 29, you would need Leicester to beat Bournemouth away from home and Wolves to beat Brighton 
um, at home. So again, is there a, ch a high chance of that happening? Not really, but it is a possibility. Uh, Liverpool got Southampton. They're almost certainly going to go through. Forest got Man United. If Nottingham Forest win that game, then Man United versus Sheffield United will be on in 29. If Man United beat Nottingham Forest, then Nottingham Forest versus Luton will be on. If Man City also beat Luton in the FA Cup, right? So it's more likely that Forest versus Luton will be on. But there is a chance that Man United versus Sheffield United could be on instead. I won't go into that anymore because it can get a bit confusing. All you really need to know for game week 29 right now is there's three guaranteed fixtures, which I've already mentioned, Burnley versus Brentford, Fulham versus Spurs, and West Ham versus Aston Villa, and that free hit 29 might be an opportunity. But if any cup upsets happen, 29 will be a lot easier to manage. And if you look at those three fixtures that are definitely on already, a lot of people will have Watkins. So adding one or two more Aston Villa players or even some from West Ham wouldn't be the end of the world. So let's say you've got three from West Ham versus Villa. You've got three Spurs players. That's already six. You add in Tony, that's seven. You're already getting quite close to 10 or 11. And if one other game goes on, let's say that Newcastle play or Chelsea and Arsenal, all of a sudden 29 becomes um, a lot easier to manage. So I wouldn't have anything set in stone in terms of chip strategy necessarily just yet just bear in mind that things can change but we will know there's FA Cup fifth round results before game week 27 and after game week 26 all right let's talk about double game week 34 so teams who get through to the FA Cup semi-final will blank in game week 34 and so will their opponents now just bear with me for a second because I've called it double game week 34 the first thing that I'm mentioning is blanks but it will all hopefully make sense in a minute so just to use Chelsea as an example here if they beat Leeds in the FA Cup fifth round, they would then get through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. And if they win that game, they're obviously then through to the semifinals. That would cause them to blank in game week 34. And so would their opponents, which in this case is Brighton. So even if Brighton were out of the cup, that fixture would have to be off because Chelsea would be playing in the FA Cup semifinals. Okay. But, right, there is a free slot that week to put another game in. So most teams won't blank. So you've got weekend and midweek. Even if, um, Chelsea versus Brighton was off because they're playing in the FA Cup. There's another slot to put a game in. So most teams won't blank. And I'll come on to that in a second. We will find out the FA Cup semi-finalists just before game week 30. So remember, before game week 27, we know the fifth round results. That will tell us who's blanking in 29. In 29, they'll play the quarterfinal games for those that are obviously in it. Um, and then before game week 30, we'll know the results of that. So we'll know who's through for the semi-finals. Teams that blank in 29 will have that fixture. And I'm pretty sure this is correct, right? If it's not, I'll leave a comment below. But teams that blank in 29 will have that fixture moved to game week 34. So let's use Chelsea as another, uh, sorry, as the example again, right? If Chelsea beat Leeds, Arsenal versus Chelsea will be off in game week 29. But that fixture would move to game week 34. So although, and in this case, right, Chelsea are semi finalists, that might not happen. Although, Chelsea versus Brighton would be off in that case. Arsenal versus Chelsea would be moved to that week. So Chelsea wouldn't blank. They just have a different fixture. But for Arsenal, that could cause a double because they would have Arsenal versus, sorry, they would have their game versus Chelsea from 29. And they'd also have their game away to Wolves, which is currently scheduled for game week 34. So if Wolves are out of the FA Cup and so are Arsenal, that game can be played. And Arsenal's blank against Chelsea from 29 would be moved to game week 34. So that's how the doubles can happen. I think it's probably worth saying that the amount of doubles in 34 will be less than 37. And it might be that a lot of the teams that end up doubling aren't really ones that you would want to necessarily carry players through long term. Arsenal may be a little bit different, but essentially the teams that will likely double in 34 will be those that are out of the FA Cup. And obviously the ones that are in it are usually kind of the better teams like your Liverpool, your Man Cities, etc. So game week 34 doubles aren't likely to be super interesting on paper, but they can happen, right? So there will be doubles in 34. We just can't be 100% sure about exactly which teams it will be right now. Hopefully that all made sense. It is possible for blanks to happen in 34 and single games and doubles as well. So for the blanks to occur, okay, and again, hopefully I've got this correct. I'm just going to go back to uh, the FPL page. Let's take Fulham versus Liverpool, for example, right? Fulham are definitely playing in 29 against Spurs. So that fixture will be played in 29. Therefore, it will not move to game week 34. There's just no need for that to happen. 
But if Liverpool get through to the semi-finals of the FA Cup, their game against Fulham would have to be off that week and Fulham wouldn't have another game to put there. So there is a chance, and I think it's actually quite a high chance right now, that Fulham could blank that week. The same could happen for Spurs as well because Spurs are playing Man City in 34. Their fixture against Fulham's definitely on in 29, as I've just said. That won't move. And obviously, if Man City get through to the semi-finals, and they will be one of the odds-on favourites to do that, that fixture would then be off. So Spurs could blank as well. So what some of you might be thinking is free hit could be quite handy because we might have some double game weeks that from teams that you won't necessarily want to stack up on players from, like long-term. We could also have some blanks to deal with as well. And if one of those blanks is Spurs, although the fixture they're missing is Man City, either side of that, you might want them. If we have a quick look, let me just look at Spurs fixtures here. Before that blank, potential blank, I should say, they'd have Luton in 30, West Ham away in 31, Forest at home in 32, pretty good. Although afterwards, it is Arsenal at home in 35, Liverpool away 36. So maybe you'd get rid of Spurs players anyway. But generally, the takeaway here should be there'll be some doubles. Most teams will have a game, even if it's not a double game week. But there could be some blanks as well. And it's all based on the FA Cup semi-finals basically i won't go into that and the quarterfinals as well i guess i won't go that into any more detail hopefully um that makes sense let's talk about game week 37 so game week 37 is almost certainly going to be the biggest double game week of the season and it will likely involve some of the bigger teams as well essentially any team that you think has a good chance of getting through to the fa cup semi-finals should double in game week 37 so the odds will say that teams like liverpool and man city very likely to get through to the semi-finals therefore they would almost certainly double uh, in game week 37 and often for our fpl squads those are the teams that we want players from of course it's worth saying if there's a lot of upsets in the fifth round or the quarterfinals or if liverpool got drawn against man city so one of those teams had to go out Double game week 37 might look uh, might not look quite so good, but the odds will say that this will be the biggest double game week of the season, uh, and it's where most of the other postponed games will go. So any games that haven't gone into 25, 28, or ones that don't go into 34 will go into game week 37. At the bottom here, I've put there are, or sorry, there may be the odd game that has to go somewhere else. So in the past, we've had like double game week 35, double game week 36. There are certain scenarios where if, you know this team gets through to this stage the fa cup that game won't be able to play there so it has to go somewhere else chelsea for example might have a double in one of those odd game weeks uh, but i won't go into that in too much detail for this video i think the most thing or sorry the main thing to take away is 25 28 is a double 34 will be doubles as well and 37 will probably be the biggest double game week of the season the fixture guru so those that are predicting this well in advance will potentially have a good idea of how the rest of the season will look by game week 30 now they're not necessarily going to be able to tell you these teams will definitely double in 34 and these will definitely double in 37 but you're going to have a very good idea of which teams have extra fixtures left and if we know which games go into 34 by that point or by game week 31 then we'll know which games are likely to then go into game week 37 right because if they're not in 34 they're most likely going into 37 instead so if you're not already and you're on twitter make sure to follow ben Krellin, Planet FPL and Tarn Nadim, right? Those guys were always predicting fixtures. I know there's probably other people out there doing it as well, but they are the three main ones um, that I follow on Twitter. Planet FPL also do a podcast, which I listen to quite regularly. So make sure to check them out. They will have this information usually, no, not even usually. They will always have this info a lot quicker um, than I will. And I wouldn't be able to explain this stuff as much if it wasn't for them and other people discussing that stuff. So double game, I'll leave that there for the future game week so double game week 37 biggest game week of the season potentially a good opportunity for bench boost and if you don't use your free hit before 37 you could also use it to attack it um, as well let's talk about chip strategy so just some general thoughts on chip strategy first of all yes it is team dependent right and i know that's a cliche thing that content creators say every single season myself included but it is true and let me give you an example right if someone sat there with one free transfer going into game week 24 and no man city and no liverpool players for the double in 25 they are probably more likely to consider a wild card than someone that's got two free transfers already has triple liverpool and has two players from man city there's just net less need to wild card this early so you're going to have to think about your own team um, there will be popular strategies that a lot of people go for but it might not be the right one for how your team is set up, your preferences about players, when you want to use your other chips as well. Right? It's not just 
wild card you might have bench boost free hit to think about as well so it is going to be slightly team dependent depending on how you're already set up um, i would be open to changing your mind about when you're going to use your chips because one fixture either getting taken away or added in one cup upset in the fa cup fifth round or even one injury could make a difference in terms of when the best time to use the chips for your team might be so for example right former versus luton might not sound like an amazing fixture um, on paper but that being added into game week 28 will cause a lot more people to wildcard earlier than they would have done anyway similar it's not just the wildcard chip right similar for free hit you might be dead set on using it or not using it in 29 but if you suddenly get a load of injuries ahead of that you might have to use it similarly if there's a few cup upsets maybe you don't need to use it and you can save it down the line so it's good to have a plan in mind but, you, but with anything in fpl especially chips you should be open to changing when you use it i think for my for myself the last couple of seasons i've gone way earlier than normal based on doubles and blanks getting announced at pretty short notice whichever way you go right i really want to make this clear you will be able to manage the rest of the season okay if you're active and engaged and if you're watching this video you are probably that kind of fpl manager sometimes there are people out there that act as though if you don't do this one particular strategy your season will end right and it never works like that and some people will say i'm I'm using all my chips later that's much better i'll just use hits now right and that's fine and they kind of disregard the fact that you can just use chips now instead and use those hits later on right you will be able to manage the season yes in hindsight there will probably be a chip strategy that was best for most people's teams but obviously that's with hindsight you don't always know that in advance you can only make decisions based on the information you've got the only thing i would say on that right is hits now versus later often if it looks like it could work out well I do quite like using the chips a little bit earlier to cover any hits that you know you're going to have to take. So let's, so to give an example, right? If you're looking at your team thinking, I need a minus eight in game week 25, I need a minus four to cover the blank in 26, I need another minus eight to cover the double in 28, well, that's 20 points worth of hits that maybe you could just not take if you wildcarded instead. Now, it might be that even if you wildcard, you've got to take the odd hit here or there to manage all that stuff. But if you could cover 16 to 20 points worth of hits, that might be just worth using your wild card now. And potentially down the line, if you get stuck, you can just use those hits you were going to use anyway. So you're no worse off. But it could be that it gets so much easier to manage the end of the season. You don't need to take those hits. So again, it all depends on the type of manager you are. I think for most people, they're probably still going to save it until 30 or 31. And I'll come on to that in a second. But you could go earlier if you wanted to. And just see if you need the hits later on in the season. Um, if you've got no chips, right? Because I know there's going to be people out there with no free hit, no wild card, and they're worried that all the content's going to be about chip strategy. And a lot of it will be. Um, I think the general thought would be because you can't just make a video and say, this is how to do it if you don't have chips, because it will depend on which players you own. But you, you probably just need to be a bit more balanced with your approach to doubles and blanks. So someone that's going to wild card in 26 or 27 you can probably go all in on liverpool players for 25 maybe if you haven't got those chips you just go for two liverpool players two man city and then you're not so stuck for 26 you can then start thinking about double game week 28 instead so i think you just got to be a bit more balanced but let's get on to specific chips all right let's start with the wild card and talk about which game weeks you might want to use that in and yes before anyone asks me you can use it in a different game week to the ones that i mentioned i just think that these will be um, quite popular again it all comes down to your own team so this week game week 24 uh, possibly an option for those people low on liverpool and man city which i already mentioned especially if you've only got one free transfer you could potentially tie it in with a bench boost in game week 25 as well and generally i think in seasons gone past a lot of people prefer to bench boost straight after a wild card because you can make sure um, as much as possible anyway that you've got 15 playing players i think this season some of us are going to try and bench boost in 37, but we will have wildcarded a long time before that. So it could get a bit dodgy. So if you can wildcard in 24 and make a good bench boost in 25, that could be nice. If you bench boost in 25, of course, you can't triple captain as well. So you wouldn't be able to go for Haaland or Salah or any other player from Man City, Liverpool, etc. But because we've got that Bournemouth double in 28 of Luton at home and Sheffield United at home, you've got that backup of just doing it on Solanke instead. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if you bench boosted. And remember, the triple captain chip 
is just one extra score. Okay, even if you don't triple captain Harlan in 25, you can still captain him. Okay, so if he gets 20 points and everyone triple captains him and you just captain him, you're only 20 points down. You can make some of that up with Solanke in 28. So wildcard 24, bench boost 25 could work. Uh, you're probably quite sorry. It would probably be quite difficult to manage game week 29, the blank without a free hit or some luck in the fifth round in terms of um, the teams going out that we're not expecting. You could, of course, wildcard in 24 and free hit in 29. But if you've just listened to me talk about 34 and you're thinking that would be a good week to free hit, you've obviously only got one of them. So you've got to make a decision there. And the reason that I mention that is because some people are going to wildcard in 26 or 27 instead, and they will find it easier to manage the double in 28 and the blank in 29 without a free hit and they can save that later on instead. And from game week 30, 31, because of the fixtures, um, Liverpool, Man City, and Arsenal are probably going to be quite popular. Now, obviously, if you wildcard this week, you're going to go heavy on Liverpool and Man City. But Liverpool blank in 26. Liverpool and Man City will probably both blank in 29. You're going to start offloading their players. And if you want to get a bunch back in, you don't have a wildcard to do that. Now, for what it's worth, I don't expect by 30 and 31, even those that wildcard, to triple up on all three of those teams anyway. So you can start transitioning back to them slowly. But it is just another thing to kind of factor in. Uh, game week 26, advantages of that, you can ignore the blank in 26. So for example, if I was going to use my wild card that week, I would go all in on Liverpool this week, knowing that I can just wild card them back out. It sets you up pretty well for double game week 28, whilst also managing 29 without a free hit. But, and this is the key thing, which will probably stop me wildcarding in 26, you won't know the FA Cup fifth round results until afterwards, okay? So as I mentioned before, those games are played after 26, but before 27. And if there was even just one team that goes out, like let's say Liverpool, right, lose, which is unlikely, but if they do, suddenly they're playing in 29, they've got good fixtures afterwards, you might want two or three of those players, and you've just used your wildcard in 26. Everyone else has either kept their Liverpool players or will just wildcard them in in game week 27. So that would be the big downside of 26 is not knowing those fifth round results. You're just going to have to guess and mostly plan around the games that are definitely on. Game week 27 wildcard, you've obviously got the opposite. You will have those FA Cup results. You can plan for the double in 28 and the blank in 29 without using another chip. But you have to manage game week 26 then, right? Because you're not wildcard until after it. So if you go for triple Liverpool for 25 double, you then have to deal with them in 26 before wildcarding. Um, but you could start selling Spurs players now because they blank in 26 and then wildcard them back in in 27. So I think 26 and 27 are quite close. I think in terms of maximizing double game week 25 and dealing with 26 blank, 28 double and 29 blank, game week 26 wildcard actually works better but I would just be a bit worried about those FA Cup fifth round results and what could happen, like a couple of upsets, and all of a sudden it's probably the wrong move to wildcard in 26. I think the last two seasons, I've wildcarded in game week 26 both times. It's gone really well, but I was talking to Praz, and he said that last year, I think it was, game week 26 was after the fifth round, so we had all that information, and we could plan a lot better. So I don't know. I like the idea of going 26 because I can just get rid of all my Liverpool and start setting up. I'd just be worried about what happens in the fifth round. Um, otherwise, if you don't do any of those, most people are going to go in 30 or 31. So game week 30, you just wild card out of any of the mess that you're left in from trying to manage all the other doubles and blanks before it, and you set up for the rest of the season. We will know who has to double for the rest of... Sorry, between 30 and 38. We'll know who has extra fixtures. You might know exact... Not, sorry. You might not know exactly where they're going to go, but you'll know who has extra fixtures and has to have a double at some point. With 31, it'd just basically be similar to 30, apart from you might not need to wildcard in game week 30. You might be happy with your team. So, for example, in game week 30, some of the fixtures, Spurs versus Luton, if you've got a Spurs triple up, would you really want a wildcard out of that? Probably not. Man City are playing Arsenal. So by going for wildcard 31, you can delay stocking up on players from those teams. And Villa are playing Wolves. And as we know, Villa will definitely play in 29. So if you've got triple Wolves, uh, sorry, triple Villa left over, then you might want to keep them for that game. So if you've got triple Spurs and triple Villa for game week 29, they've got Luton at home and Wolves at home in 30. 
you might not want to get rid of them and you also might not want to load up on man city and also i don't think there's a huge amount between 30 and 31 and if you decide that that's where you're going you can just make the actual decision later on um some people will consider like gaming 35 wildcard or 36 so that they can make the best bench boost for 37 but in my opinion that is way too late to wait there are far too many other doubles and blanks before that and you're just losing too many points and not gain enough later on. So I would say for most people, using your wildcard by game week 31 is probably the strategy. So let's talk about when you might want to use the free hit. So game week 25 is definitely going to be quite popular, and that could be good for those people that don't have many Man City and Liverpool players. They don't want a wild card, and they also don't want to hold players from those teams long term. So reasons you might not want to do that is Liverpool, obviously blank in 26. So if you haven't got any, you free hit three in for the double, and then you just don't worry about them after that. And with Man City, it might just be rotation concerns, right? So you might just not want to have them in your team. You'd rather just free hit them in. That's all fair enough. And I don't think Game Week 25 free hit is awful, but I'm not sure there's enough reason to warrant using it rather than saving it for down the line. Like if you're really low on Man City and Liverpool and you want to get them in, I think for most people, it makes more sense to wildcard. Now, with the free hit, my opinion sorry not even my opinion right but my thoughts around it are you should be trying to get the most points with it over a span of game weeks it's not just about the week that you use it obviously if you use it in a double with man city and liverpool that's great right there's a lot of points on offer but i generally think for most people it works better using it in a week where there's probably going to be some blank game weeks or maybe like 29 or maybe even in a game week like 34 where you've got some potential small doubles, but also some blanks to contend with as well, because that allows you to get players in that you don't really want, which I know sounds weird, right? But it means you don't have to carry them before and after. Whereas with Man City and Liverpool, okay, Liverpool, you might have to transfer out in 26, but Man City have got Bournemouth away. It's not that bad. And lots of players are getting good minutes at the moment as well. Haaland's fine. Walker's probably going to be okay as well. Foden, De Bruyne, etc. They're not necessarily players you need to get rid of straight away. So I'm not the biggest fan of 25. It has to be said, but it could work for some teams. Uh, 26 allows you to carry Liverpool, Spurs and Luton players because obviously you can just free hit them out. Uh, not that bad. I guess one thing to think about is um, what other games are on that week, right? So in game week 26, maybe you go for a couple of Man United players against Fulham. Obviously, you'd probably triple up on Man City, maybe go for one or two Arsenal against Newcastle. Is that enough for you to want to use the free hit? And if it is, plus obviously the fact you get to keep your loot and Liverpool and Spurs players, that might be okay. The problem for me is Liverpool then have Forest away, Man City at home and blank. There's just not a huge need to keep hold of them. Plus, once Salah's back, which could be very soon, the minutes of a lot of the other attackers will go down as well. I think, again, for most people, it's probably better to not use the free hit. I would rather think about wildcard instead. I just think the free hit will be much more useful to you down the line because of the reason I just said, where you can get players in you don't want. I, I just think for most people, that usually works out pretty well. I've said most people quite a lot, haven't I? Uh, game week 34 might not have the best double game weeks, but one... Again, that means you might not want players from those teams, but also people underestimate double game week still. So I like that. Plus, it would allow you to manage any blank. So if Fulham and Spurs, etc., blank, if you've got any players from those teams, you take them out and you get more players in that are doubling, right? Um, and it allows you to pick up, uh, yeah, double game week players you might not want long term. And then 37, obviously, you attack the biggest double game week of the season. It might help with guessing rotation as well, because if Man City have got the league wrapped up, right and teams like liverpool and man city are still in europe they will prioritize europe instead of the league and so if i don't know let's say harlan's getting rested alvarez is constantly playing you might want to free hit him in but you might not have had him in your team already right similar with liverpool maybe trent's getting rested you want to play connor bradley instead whatever it might be right that free hit in 37 will let you think about that much closer to the time but then you've got to think about when you're bench boosting. And if you're saving it for the biggest double of the season, you can also free hit that week as well. All right, just some general thoughts on the bench boost. If you fall or land into a good bench soon, it might be worth just getting rid of the bench boost chip because there's no guarantee later on in the season there's going to be a great time to use it, right? Double game week 37 sounds great in theory, 
But if there's lots of rotation and you've had a bunch of injuries before that, it's going to be very difficult to manage your first 11 and get a good bench out. It could be that there's going to be so many doubles in 37 that it also makes it really easy to have a good bench, but the opposite could happen as well. So if you happen to have a good bench soon, getting rid of that chip and hopefully obviously getting points as well, which is the main aim with it, right? I wouldn't just get rid of it for the sake of it and then not having to worry about it and plan around it later on in the season could be beneficial. It could also be handy to use it before you wildcard, not after, again, if you have a good bench. So I don't know, let's just say your team is perfectly set up the bench boost in 25 and you also have loads of liverpool and man city great happy days use it and then if you wild card soon afterwards again you're planning mostly for your first 11 i think the bench boost chip is a little bit more difficult to talk about exactly which week to use it in right now because of how people's teams are set up and because a lot of it will factor into when you're using other chips too um bench boost 28 a lot of people are going to consider that now because of luton and bournemouth doubling I've looked at it, right? And if you wildcard soon, I think you're mostly going to be left with Villa and Spurs players on the bench and it's them playing against each other. So it's Villa players home to Spurs and Spurs away to Villa, which isn't that inspiring for me. And the reason you would want players from those teams is because they're guaranteed to play in 29. So if you're planning properly, you'll have some of those players for 28 because you'll want them for 29. But obviously you'll have double game week players for Bournemouth and Luton that you'll want to play instead. So it would be realistic to play Tavernier or Senesai over a Porro or a Douglas Louise, and therefore those players go on your bench. It just doesn't look that great. But again, your team might be in a better position to play it that week. Bench boost 34, there could be too many blanks to have to plan around that. And the doubles might not be good enough to warrant a bench boost. Now, if they land correctly, and you wildcard in 30 or 31, you can make that decision then. But as it stands, I don't think it's necessarily going to be a great week to use it. And obviously, Bench Boost 37, as I've just said, sounds great in theory, but there's quite a lot of time between when most people are going to wildcard and when they would use that Bench Boost chip. Again, it could be that it just falls in place and it's just easy to get a good bench out. But if there's, so, if there's a lot of rotation, that gets a lot more difficult. Basically, if you're saving chips for 37, realistically, you want the relegation battle to not be over and you want the title race still open. But the chances are, because it happens most seasons, Man City will already have won it by then and they will rotate and so will other teams, especially if they're still in Europe as well. So bench boost is quite tricky. Um, I'll tell you where I'm thinking about using it later on, but I think for a lot of people, it's probably still 37. But if you get a good chance to use it soon, take it. So just some general triple captain thoughts. Now, this one applies to any chips, of course, but no chips can be used together in the same week. So you can't wildcard and bench boost in the same week. You can't bench boost and triple captain, etc. So it's probably worth working backwards from when you might want to use the other chips. So we know there's going to be a double game week in 25 and 28. There'll be some in 34 and quite a few in 37. But if you're looking at it thinking, well, I want a bench boost in 37, I want a free hit in 34, that really narrows down when you can use that triple captain chip if you want to use it on a double game week player. If you want to go for a single game week player, that's completely up to you. I always prefer to use it on the two games. And in that case, you're looking to use it on Solanke in 28 or one of the Liverpool Man City players in 25. But of course, if you want to bench boost one of those weeks, that kind of then puts the triple captain in the other week. So it's not that the triple captain is the least important or, or, or not worth worrying about, but often the other chips tie a lot more into your planning. And like I said, if you're using certain ones down the line, then you can also use your triple captain. So for most people, I think 25 or 28, if you get the chance to use it, use it in one of those two and then worry about the rest of the chips for the other parts of the season. And I really want to make this clear. Use it on whoever you think will score the most points. Yes, it's nice to go for a differential. And if you think Haaland and Solanke are quite close, then you could just triple captain Solanke because he will be um, lower captain than Haaland will be, almost certainly anyway. But ultimately, you want to use it on who you think will get the most points. And I know that sounds really simple, but for some reason, this chip gets complicated every single year. And I guarantee you, there are already threads on Twitter saying that it's better to use it on a differential because your rank will increase more. But overall, it's only the total points that matter. And I think I talked about this on a video, maybe even yesterday. But if Haaland gets 20 points and you triple captain him, your triple captain is worth 20 points. Because remember, if you don't use the chip, you can still captain him, okay? 
So someone that doesn't use the chip on Haaland gets 40 points because they've captained him, presumably anyway. And those that triple captain, they get 60. If you triple captain Solanke and he gets 15, then your triple captain is worth 15. So it's five less than those that went on Haaland. Just because Solanke's lower own does not mean that your overall rank at the end of the season is better. It's about getting the most points, okay? Now, again, if you think Solanke's just a better option, just go for him, right? I'm just trying to make the point. It's about total points, not necessarily captain in differentials. But again, if you think it's close, by all means, go for the differential or just use it in a different week completely. You don't have to use it in 25 or 28. And you don't have to captain one of those two, right? If Salah's back fit, you could go for him. You could punt on Jota, Darwin. You go for a different player in 28. It's completely up to you, but most people are going to go Harlan and Solanke. That's why I use them um, as examples. And my strategy, and probably from the way I've talked, um, you've already guessed it. But as it stands right now, probably triple captain 25 on Harland, three hitting 34 to manage potential blanks and small doubles, and then bench boost in 37. My wild card, I'm open 26, 27, 30, 31. If I had to say right now, it'd be 30 or 31. But I am open to going early. I do like 26. I really do. I just don't like the fact that we won't know the fifth round results. And I think in the end, that will put me off. And I think if I can, I'll leave my options open to either go 27 if I need it, right? Depending on what happens in the FA Cup. If not, I just delay it until 30, 31. So I guess I'm not completely decided on wildcard. But I think that is the hardest chip to decide. If you can, like I know I said keep an open mind, right? And you should do that. But if you can decide earlier rather than later, that lets you kind of optimize your transfers now. Like if I knew I was going in 26, that would make my moves this week super easy. I would just bring in Jota and Darwin, knowing that I don't have to worry about them long term. But if I'm not going to wildcard till 30 or 31, then putting more Liverpool players in means I've got to get rid of more in 26. And that could cause more hits. So there's just more to think about. So I guess where possible, either decide early or do it in a way that you can leave your options open. But I am more than happy to change my mind. If you've been following my channel for the last couple of years, there was one week where I think, sorry, one season where I think we were able to use our second wildcard in game week 18. And I used it that week because all of a sudden, Man City and Man United had a double and there was a blank the following week, but both those teams played. So I got six players from those teams plus a bunch of others. And that wildcard was able to manage that stage of the season. That's why all of a sudden, I've gone from 30 or 31. Maybe I could go in 26, but it's not a guarantee. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that was useful. I tried to explain that as best as I could without making it sound super confusing. If I've missed anything or I've got something wrong, I will leave a pinned comment below to explain what is incorrect because chances are there is something. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you listen on podcast, there won't be a pinned comment, but maybe I'll put it up on Twitter or something like that instead. If you enjoyed that, rate five stars. Otherwise, I'll catch you tomorrow for final thoughts.